we were locked out. Hey. They're telling people to get our food stamps. Come on, We're only making a 25. I have two kids and one on the way, and I cannot survive off a 25. Since I've been pregnant, they've been cutting my hours, which I don't think is right. And I just feel everyone that's here today because I understand what you're going through because I'm going through the same thing. And I just need. We all want fifteen dollars in the union. We all want it. We all deserve it. We all work hard. We don't just do one position. We do a whole lot of positions. Uh -huh. I'm spending back and forth over for people doing everything I'm not even supposed to do. I'm supposed to just do one position. I'm doing like four or five positions at a time. It's not right at all. I just feel like we deserve more and and we are going to get more. We need it. We all need it to survive. 825, we cannot survive. It's barely, we're, I'm barely surviving off that. My boyfriend has to work three jobs and just to take care of our family because I'm working but it's not enough. Like the pay is not enough at all. And I just appreciate everyone that's coming out and everyone that's supporting us. Thank you. Yeah. What's your name? Jocelyn, and I work at Popeyes. I work at a fast food place also, and I'm fighting for $15 in union because I don't want my sister to go through the same thing. I'm going through. I have to limit myself. I have to pay rent. I have to help my mom pay rent, and I can't survive with with $8 an hour. And I, it's not possible. We can't survive. They make more money, and they they're not, they can't give us more money. And I have. I've been working at Popeyes for a year. They can't give me a new uniform. It's not, I don't want my sister to go through the same thing I would go through. So that's why I'm here fighting. So my so my sister or my kids don't go through the same thing I'm going through. Well, the, the owners say that they'll have to raise the food prices if they pay more money. Oh, they raise the food prices, but they ain't giving us no. It's the same thing, $8 an hour. But everything went up, but our salary didn't go. Well, health care. Do you get health care? No, no health care. I, I, I survived my food. Food stamps and eight dollars an hour. Food stamps or some type of government assistance. Why do you think people should have to pay for food stamps for workers when they don't pay minimum of decent? I get food stamps. They just cut them in November. The food stamps. I don't know for every you know every. The government is paying for food stamps. Taxpayers. But the owner doesn't pay you a higher wage for food stamps. Yes, I have two starving students that are homeless in humble states. I I really don't like to get food stamps, but I have no choice. I can't survive off eight dollars an hour. So that's why I'm here fighting fifteen dollars an hour. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna stop fighting until I get $15 dollars an hour. Fast food workers nationwide. Jocelyn, yes. Um, I just graduated from high school and I can't. I can't go to college. I can't go to college because I can't. I can't afford it. I can't afford to go to college. And I'm, I, I can't survive. I want to go to college to be somebody in life, but I can't because. Tienda o de estar en Estados Unidos. No, no, trabaja en, en esta tienda tengo 15 años. 15 years. 15 years. No. Yeah. What's your minimum? What, what, ¿Cuánto le paga? Pero con el ocho años. Sigue ocho años. Eight dollars a day. Es el mínimo. Todos have tenemos have el mínimo. Yo tengo niños. Sí. ¿Cuántos? ¿Cuántos? Aquí tengo cuatro. Four kids. Four kids. How do you survive? ¿Cómo me sobrevive? Que como vivo, cómo sobrevive por lo que me están pagando los dólares. Pues, me limito, me limito a no hacer muchos gastos. Compro lo necesario. Four kids. Four kids. Yeah. So, do you have to go use food stamps? No, no, no. Nunca lo he hecho. No. no. What do you, Nunca he agarrado. What do you think about the wealth of McDonald's, the owners, and the wages of the workers? ¿Qué crees que acá de, de los de, de los dueños, los dueños, los dueños de aquí que tanto que están haciendo mucho dinero? ¿Qué piensa usted de ellos? Billions, billionaires. Hacen millones de dólares. Ay, Ay, ¿sí? Claro que sí, ellos hacen mucho dinero. Está enojada de verdad. Claro, pues claro, yo estoy molesta por eso porque en verdad.
works and she's very hard. Yeah. Very hard. Sí, porque yo tengo muchos años de estar acá eh, con él. Más antes estaba trabajando con este mismo dueño. Ahora él es el dueño de esta tienda y estoy otra vez trabajando con él. Y no es justo. Y siempre estoy ganando el mínimo. She's been working here 15 hours and they had a new um, boss and he still doesn't want to do her minimum. She don't want, he don't want to raise her minimum. Her wages, yeah. And she's, she's very hurt about that. Upset about that. What do you think about the idea of a $15 an hour minimum wage? Oh, they yeah. share. Vivo con mi hija. ¿Y So, the future, how can people That's survive? Right. You can be working. They can't afford the feed yourself. In this rich country. Marta García. Willie Hatton, I'm out here today to uh, support the fast food movement. You know, we are, feel, I feel like, that you know, fast food workers get paid or underpaid, and we are here to try to get $15 in the union because, you know, we are hard workers and we are part of a corporation. And if the corporations get paid so much money, why they cannot? We're not asking for too much, we're asking for only enough. I can work full time and I cannot afford to give me my own place, pay my rent and my car note on the rate, on the rate that I'm getting paid right now. So I'm just up the pay. And that's why I'm here. I'm here to try to you know, support the East Bay, pay, um, pay up, and get $15 in the union. Uh, nothing more, nothing less. Why are the companies saying they can't afford to pay you $15 an hour more with money? Um, they're not really giving an explanation about that, but... Um, Did you ask them? No, they have asked them. I have not asked them personally yet. Today's my first day. I'm just getting involved today. And Where do you work at? Right now, currently, I'm right now, I'm not working anywhere. I'm just here because my cousin told me to come out and support, I'm supporting him. He work at McDonald's in uh, Pernod. Yeah. So, so how do young people survive on $8 an hour? They don't. They don't. When you get your check, you pay your bills, and then you go broke. You have no money to get to work, no money to um, for lunch, you know. And if you want to have cable, then that's the bigger problem. You know, you can't pay your bills and everything. It really is hard. Is that it's slave hard. wages? <laughs> no, no. We no. We want our wages up, and we we need it now. We're not gonna wait no longer. We're not gonna take up take this anymore. We're here to stand up, stand strong in solidarity with you know our brothers and sisters of the fast food industry, you know, and hopefully revolutionize the fast food industry forever. You know, change it for the better. But we're not asking for too much. We're asking for only enough. You know, that's all we want is enough. We want enough to be able to support ourselves when we're working full time in the fast food industry. You know, we should be able to have our place and um, be able to have our place and pay for our rent and our bills. How, how does it. it affect families, like children? It, it affects family and children tremendously because now children, they cannot have um, nice clothes and things like that, you know? You gotta shop at the Goodwill and everything like that. There's nothing wrong with that, but at the same time, why they cannot have new things, new nice stuff? Now why, why can't, if I work in here, at um, a fast food industry, why my kids can't have a Merry Christmas? Because I gotta pay my rent and my bills. And now I, I can't even afford nothing else for myself. So 
so my kids will never have Merry Christmas. But hopefully one day the um, corporations, the McDonald's, the Burger Kings, you know, and all other fast food industry will be able to stand up and see that we are the life and we are the the roots of the fast food industry. We are entry level workers and we are at the bottom. But at the same time, if it wasn't for us working our jobs, doing a good job at our job, the corporation would have wouldn't make no money. McDonald's would be nothing without me asking that people cannot take their order. You know, I am the reason why they are loving it. And if I was at Burger King, I would be the reason why I'm making it. Why I'm the reason you can have it your way. So why make, why Burger King can't make it so I can have it my way? I don't want to have, I don't want too much. We only want enough. We want enough. Just enough. But you know, hold your burger, hold your fries, make our, how you say? Hold your burger, hold your fries, cannot survive on 825. We're not surviving. We still Still struggling as we working hard, <laughs> working hard and struggling. That's I don't know what to say. Well, this is America, this is government. You know, we, this is a democracy. We just here trying to just bring it to your attention, to the corporations' attention, and bring it to the people, to the streets. Let everybody know what's going on, and we just want a pay increase. Uh, my name's Nikki Fordonado Bass. I live here in Oakland. I also work with a group called East Bay Alliance for a Sustainable Economy, and I'm here today because these workers are making just minimum wage. They're not able to feed their families, and I'm here to support them in calling for $15 and the right to form a union. Why are these companies like McDonald's and fast foods who make billions of dollars refuse to pay a living wage? I think they're just, personally, I think they're just greedy. You know, about 52% of fast food workers in the country have to rely on public safety net programs to get by, so we're subsidizing these corporations. And I think the public needs to know more about that so that we can put an end to subsidizing Walmart, fast food companies, and other companies that aren't paying workers enough to survive, even though they're working really hard. How does one survive in the Bay Area open on $8 an hour? Well, if you talk to any of these workers, it's really hard. Like, they're making hard. I, I've talked to some of these workers. They're making choices between putting food on the table or paying the rent or feeding their kid or feeding themselves. It's a real struggle. Uh, they're, they're having a really hard time, so $15 is what they're asking for, and I think these companies can afford it. Well, it's CTAC they passed an initiative That's for $15 right. an hour. Are you going to be going for the same thing in Oakland? I think we have to figure out how we can uh, raise the minimum wage faster than the state is. It's going up to $9 in January, but that's still not enough. This is Matt Hittich from TWU 556, Union of Southwest Airlines Flight Attendants, and we're here to support uh, the $15 uh, minimum wage increase. Well, these restaurants say it's uh, they'll have to raise prices, they can't uh, afford to pay $15 an hour. It'll have to come out of their billion dollars in profits, is that what they're telling us? That's bullshit. So you don't think it's right for uh, taxpayers to subsidize fast food workers, the owners? Uh, no. That's, 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 that's ridiculous. Well, I understand that's happening in the airlines. Flight attendants have to go on food stamps because they're not paying enough. That exactly. That's why they need a union, right? So they can bargain face to face with management and demand more, uh, more compensation for the work that they do. And you're, are you a flight attendant too? Yes, I am. Where at? The Southwest Airlines. What's your name? My name's Josh Rosenberg, 556 TWU. Everyone deserves a living wage, rights when they work. And if the company's not going to listen to an employee, they need something else with them, behind them. So you think it's a human right? A human wage is a human right? Of course. In, in a society, yes. <laughs> I mean, we live in a society. <laughs> We're all working together to build something, so, yeah. Why are you here today? To support my mom. 
your mom to support your mom. Is your mom a fast food worker? Yes. Dile que paren los despidos. Where does she work? <laughs> Jack in the box. Jack in the box. And how much does she make? ¿Cuánto haces al día? ¿Cuánto ganas? Ya me corrieron. She got fired. She got fired. Yeah. And why did they fire you? Because she got fired. Por los papeles. Por la... They asked her for her green card. She what? They asked her for her green card and she didn't have it. They asked her for a green card. Do you think what's going on in this country is fair for immigrant workers? No. Because they're... Because most of them have worked over since the company was made and they are like more than 15 years and they still make a minimum wage. Do you think oh, President Obama should uh, stop deportations yes. and uh, allow workers to stay here who are working? Yes. What does your mom think about that? And how old are you? I'm gonna turn 12. You're 12? I'm gonna turn 12. Really, you're 11. turning 12. So, is this any way to live in America? <laughs> Then also in jobs they're being, they're being racist and most of jobs they're, they're discriminating people because of their skin color. Their skin color. So you think it's a racial? A racial. They don't. They treat white workers differently. Yeah. Or like they just they um they, the managers they treat um the people that are like like their race the same as them because that's their same race. And how is it racism that you're jack and white? Almost racist. Almost racism. She said that they fire people inappropriate. No dar las gracias por los 15 años que estuve trabajando. They didn't give her thanks. No, nothing like not even thank her for the 15 years that she has worked there. How many years? 15. 15 years at this at this place. So you made a lot of money for the owners. <laughs> Hard work, so many years. It's not very unfair. After 15 years. Okay, what's your name? Adela. Adela, and what's your mother's name? Maricela. Speak in Spanish. In Espanol, in Espanol, Maricela. About what happened to you? Okay, then look at that or something. My name is Boots Riley. Um, I'm from a rap group called The Coup. And I'm here just to support the workers, fast food workers, not just here, but all over the country in their fight for a better wage and better working conditions. Um, it's also a fight that I think affects so many other things. Right now, uh, when they look at uh, low-income communities, especially communities of color, uh, there's a lot of talk about the violence that goes on and all that sort of stuff. But we know that that violence is just an outgrowth of the regulation of illegal economies. We could make the fast food companies pay enough for people to have a living wage. And that would actually be more than people make selling dope. And that would cut down most of the violence that happens out in the streets, which is just people fighting over money. McDonald's makes billions of dollars per year. And the way they're able to make all that money is because they don't pay people anything. And so they can still make billions by paying people a wage that they can live on and survive on. Well, young young people, young black kids, black youth, the Oscar Grants of the world, it seems like they're having a struggle to survive in America. Is this the reason you know, these companies aren't paying this? Well, yeah. The reason is that under this system, first of all, there's only going to be a, f a few jobs. Uh, there, I mean, there's not going to be enough jobs. But also on top of that, the jobs that exist 
are making a lot of money and paying very low wages. So people are having a hustle to survive. Uh, and by hustle, I mean do things that aren't considered legal and are, put them at risk for being locked up or having to deal with other violent problems. And these these businesses are in the community. They can't move to Mexico. They can't run from us. They can't move to China. They can't run. We can make them pay more. And the only way that we're going to be able to do it, though, is through militant uh, strikes at, just like this. They're not going to give it up easily. And the only way that those strikes are going to really be effective is if uh, we buy, if, is if we ignore the Taft-Hartley laws and have solidarity strikes, which make the corporate uh, owners have to rework the deal with the, the franchises. Well, President Obama says he's concerned about inequality. You think that the government, the U.S. government, is really interested in concerns of these workers here today? I think they're concerned with people voting for them and saying whatever they think makes people not do this. So, you know, and, and that's what they're concerned with. So if saying that they're concerned with inequality makes people not strike and wait and hope for them to do something, then they'll say it. Now, recently there was a BART struggle. BART workers were blamed for being greedy and they attacked them. Do you think there's a war on working people in this country? Well, I think the system is in itself a war on working people. The system in itself, and by working people, I'm not excluding unemployed people. There's a war on the working class. It's, it's called exploitation. The only way that there's all this wealth is that there's people not getting paid what they're worth. And that is... Yeah, exactly. And so that's the system inherited in the system itself. You think that... People are just starting to get angry and angry and it's going to really change the situation in this country? I don't think anger changes the situation. I think optimism changes the situation. And optimism that that's, uh, sprouts from people seeing that they have a way to have power. This is not anger. Anger, anger ends up being frustration. This is determination. And that determination only comes from an analysis that says that things are not all over with. Things are not just doom and gloom. That the workers have the power. And that's optimism. That's not anger. I think my music is a reflection of my ideas and I think my ideas have a lot to do with the struggles that people are going through. Uh, you know, a lot of times in, in the past I've written about a movement that really wasn't in existence, hoping that people could have a vision of that. Um, and right now, there's movements jumping up all over the world and more specifically movements jumping up all around the United States and movements that while have while they have some reform, reform demands are very radical in nature and in the bent in the way they're doing it. Two years ago any union person I met with told me that fast food was unworkable. They told me that, like, just practically it can't happen. And what they're seeing is that the population is radicalized. Uh, in large part due to what happened during the Occupy movement. And what happened to the, during the Occupy movement was simply everybody seeing that so many people agreed with them. Because I think that the population of the U.S. has a lot of radical tendencies already, as far as in theory. But they didn't think anyone else did. Occupy movement showed them that they did. Uh, fast food workers are very open to something that could work. The only problem is they wonder whether it can work. And so far it's it's working. My name is Rina Ramos and I'm with the Restaurant Opportunity Center and I'm here to support the five of the people so that they cannot continue making poverty wages. Uh, is eight dollars an hour you can't live on that? You can never live on that. It, you barely 
barely make it. So how do families, adults live on eight dollars an hour? Well, they have to let go of many basic needs. And what, do you think that this will have any effect? This demonstration. Yes, I think every every little counts. Every rally, every petition, every voice that is raised, it will build up to the moment when things change. And what's your organization? The Restaurant Opportunity Center, Rock the Bay. And what does it do? We organize restaurant workers and different other venues. Are, are there any unionization drives going on? No, no. We are a worker center, not a union. I just want to say one more thing. I give credit to where it is due, and I want to appreciate these workers over here at this McDonald's for walking out on strike. We are here. We are here to support you. Everybody that walked out on this at this location right here, we're here. We got your back. We're all fellow workers, and we understand what you're going through. So continue doing what you're doing. We'll be back.